हेलो एवरीवन एंड वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल ज्ञान संपदा इन अवर प्रीवियस क्लास ऑफ कंडेंस मैटर फिजिक्स वी वर डीलिंग विद द स्पिन वेव एंड द मैग्नॉन कॉन्सेप्ट एंड इन अवर लास्ट क्लास वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द क्लासिकल अप्रोच टू डिराइव द डिस्पर्शन रिलेशन फॉर स्पिन वेव्स सो इफ यू हैव नॉट गॉन थ्रू द प्रीवियस क्लासेस then do check it out in the playlist section where we have the playlist named ferromagnetism so that today's class will be more effective so let's start our today's class where we are going to deal with the quantization of spin waves we have seen that spin waves are nothing but the collective excitations of electron spin structure within the crystal system which gives rise to magnons and as such quantization it is related to quantum mechanics so if we consider classical physics we deal with macroscopic particles where we consider the medium to be continuous but in case of quantum mechanics or quantum physics we deal with the microscopic and sub microscopic particles where we can observe the discreteness in any variable which is studied with respect to quantization where we make use of certain quantum numbers to understand about quantization that is how any variable can be expressed in terms of the integral multiples of its basic unit that is how energy of different energy levels can be expressed in terms of ground state energy so quantization can be understood in that manner and also we are going to see whether it is comparable with any of the basic model that is we have studied about simple harmonic oscillator and we know that the energy of a simple harmonic oscillator is quantized with respect to the equation e is equals to n plus half into h cross omega so let us find out what might be the relation for quantization of spin waves so if you consider a ferromagnetic ground state we know that all the spins are parallel to each other that is they are not excited to the higher levels which means we observe the ordered state of the system therefore we can say that total spin quantum number of a system of n spins which is having s as the magnitude of spin in the state equal to n into s where n is the number of spin in the system so this is for the ground state but magnons are created on the excitation of electron spins so the excitation of the spin waves is going to lower the total spin because the spin doesn't remain parallel anymore so they are going to orient in a different way than the parallel nature that's why we can say the total spin value is reduced below the saturation value that is the saturation is something like n into s that is the maximum value and due to the excitation we can observe that total spin value is reduced below ns thus we can say as more and more excitation takes place the total spin value is going on reducing so let us consider the reduction of total spin value along z direction because generally we consider field along z direction that's why the z component of spin denoted as s z will be equal to square root of s square minus u square raised to half thus the z component of spin will be given as s z is equals to square root of s square minus u square which we consider as equation number 1 so in the previous class we have derived some of the conclusions based on the amplitude values where we found that v is equals to minus i into u and also square of the spins with respect to their components so using the same relation like the total spin can be written as s square is equals to sum of squares of spin components along x y z direction and we know that spx square plus spy square is nothing but u square so if we substitute this value in the above equation as u square 
we observe that s square is equals to u square plus spz square which means s square minus u square will be equal to spz square. So in the last class we considered the pth location of the spin here we are just considering in general. So sz will be equal to square root of s square minus u square. So in order to solve this let us consider the case for small amplitudes because u is nothing but the amplitude which is related again to v which are the components of traveling wave solution. So for small amplitude means u by s is going to remain very much less than 1. So we are going to use this condition in our equation number 1. We have s z is equals to s into square root of 1 minus u by s whole square. Here in equation 1 we have taken s square common. So square root of s square will be just s. Then inside the bracket we are remaining with 1 minus u by s whole square. We are going to take s common so that we can apply this small amplitude condition which is u by s very much less than 1. So this is the condition of something like 1 minus x raised to n where x is very much less than 1 and we have the standard relation for that and in that case we get the equation to be equal to 1 minus n into x. So we are doing the same thing thus s as it is 1 minus x raised to n will be equal to 1 minus n into x. So n is 1 by 2 u square by s square as it is. So now simplifying that is multiplying s inside the bracket we can observe 1 s is going to cancel out in the second term so that we can write s minus sz. So s is the total spin magnitude minus the spin magnitude along z direction will be equal to u square by 2s. But this is just for a single spin for reference. So as we have considered totally n number of spins multiplying by n we get the total spin and in this equation we can clearly observe that we are having the term of total spin minus along one direction. The spin with respect to ground state and with respect to excited state which may lead us to the quantization condition. So when we multiply it so we can say ns minus nk is the z component of total spin where nk is nothing but n uk square by 2s that is we have done the multiplication and then if you just simplify we get ns minus nsz is equals to this term and ns minus nsz to the right hand side and bringing this term to the left hand side we get ns minus nu square by 2s is equals to n into sz. So that term is taken to be equal to nk. So when the ground state total spin is subtracted with this term we can get the z component of total spin and if you simplify it and if we observe it clearly we are just representing it with respect to the position by taking the subscript k. So if we rearrange here you can observe uk square will be equal to 2s by n into nk which is taken to be equation number 3 and this equation represents the quantization condition for spin waves of amplitude uk. So this is with respect to the amplitude but the main factor whenever we consider any system will be generally the energy because based on energy easily we can get different parameters corresponding to any system. So to find energy ek when a spin wave is excited let us consider the interaction between the two spins sp and sp plus 1 and from the Heisenberg interaction we have exchange energy is equals to minus 2 j dash sp dot sp plus 1 that is nearest neighbor interaction which can be written as minus 2 j dash s square into cos phi that is we have considered the two spins their precisions 
are with respect to the magnetic field along z direction which is having the strength h so precession of spin sp and the neighboring spin sp plus 1 both are having the magnitude of spin as s and the angle between the two spins is nothing but phi so we know a dot b is nothing but a b cos theta in the same manner we have substituted and we have got the equation number 4 where phi is the angle between the two spins and s is the magnitude or length of the spin again moving with the same steps that is considering the small amplitude which means u by s is very much less than 1 and in order to get this relation we need to consider the relation between phi and u let us consider cos phi we know cos phi is equals to 1 minus 2 sin square phi by 2 and this can be written as 1 minus 2 times of u by s sin square and this can be written as 1 minus 2 times u by s sin k by 2 whole square that is on solving we get sin phi by 2 is equals to u by s sin k a by 2 so just we have substituted that value and when we simplify we can observe that we are again having the term of u by s and we know that sin square theta by 2 is nothing but 1 minus cos theta by 2 so sin square k a by 2 will be equal to 1 minus cos k a divided by 2 here clearly we can observe this 2 and this 2 will get cancelled and we are remaining with 1 minus u by s whole square into 1 minus cos k a so let us call it as equation number 5 and then we need to substitute equation 5 in equation 4 that is in place of cos 5 we will put this value so that we get exchange energy is equals to minus 2 j dash s square into 1 minus u by s whole square into 1 minus cos k a so this is the amount of interaction which is nothing but the exchange energy for two neighboring spins but as such we have a number of spins in any system so we need to consider total interaction energy of the spin system of n number of spins thus we just need to multiply it by capital n so exchange energy will be equal to minus 2j dash into n into s square into the same term only n is extra here so when we multiply it within the brackets we can observe two terms that is minus 2j dash n into s square which is relating to the ground state where all the spins are parallelly oriented and the second term represents the term with respect to the excitation of the spins so as we are studying about the quantization the relative nature is important that is what happens to the system in excited state with respect to the ground state therefore the excitation energy of a spin wave of amplitude uk and the wave vector k can be given as ek is equals to 2j dash n uk square into 1 minus cos k a that is only the excitation term is considered here and with respect to wave vector k we are writing the amplitude with the subscript k that is uk square where uk is the amplitude and then substituting the value of uk square from our previous slide that is uk square is equals to 2s by n into nk and capital N is going to cancel out leaving with 4 j dash s into 1 minus cos k a into n k and in the last class we have already derived the dispersion relation of spin waves where we observed that h cross omega is equals to 4 j dash s into 1 minus cos k a so substituting the value from the dispersion relation of magnons we observe e k is equals to h cross omega k into n k so this whole term is nothing but h cross omega k and n k as it is so this is the excited state energy 
but the quantization is the difference between the two energy states. Therefore, energy of a mode of frequency is omega k with n k number of magnons is given by E k is equals to n k plus half into h cross omega k, where in general we call this half as the correction factor leading us to the quantization condition of spin waves with respect to energy. And this excitation of magnons corresponds to reversal of one spin half is to be remembered. That is why this correction factor is included here. And we can observe that the quantization of spin waves proceeds exactly as that of the photons and phonons. So, it is almost same. Generally, we say E is equals to n plus half h cross omega. And when we add this correction factor, we can observe the discrete nature of the medium. That is, if you consider the higher excited states and take the difference between the consecutive states, we can observe that there is a energy difference in each consecutive energy level which will be almost same as in the case of simple harmonic oscillator. So, this is the details about the quantization of spin waves where we understood about the quantization condition for the amplitude as well as with respect to energy and also we found the relation to be similar as that of the quantization condition of photons and phonons. So, this is for today's class and in our next class we will be dealing with the thermal excitation of magnons where we will study about the density of states also. So, till then study well, stay safe and thank you for watching.